Good evening, welcome back to Heart and Hand Extra. This is your second free show of the week and I am your host, Adam Thornton. Another happy Friday, uh, another pretty happy extra show, as I'm sure we're all still on a high following the two outstanding wins last week. Joining me to look back briefly on those and also look ahead to this weekend's game is one of my most favourite and most happy friends, Martin Ramsey. How are you? Um, delighted to be here, Damsky. It's been a while since we've been on, but um, yeah, all good. Sun shining. Absolutely, sun shining. And we are looking ahead um, to tomorrow's game uh, against Motherwell, first of all. Um, but before we do that, I just want to go back a little bit. I won't dwell on it too much given we've had days and days of, of reviews of, of Sunday's game but you can indulge me and you because we've not spoken about it on the air yet. Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts on last Sunday's win against Celtic. Um, I was at a gig in Edinburgh on Sunday night uh, and bumped into a few Rangers fans and everyone just looked absolutely drained by the day's events. I think for me it was one of the most intense games of football uh, I think I've ever experienced and thankfully we we got a positive result. I would agree with intensity. Uh, and it, it was quite a tired and emotional evening. Um, this could be very important. Time will, time will tell and only time will tell um, for, for the manager because the narrative looked set. A narrative that we, we, we know very well uh, that we're not bad, um, but we don't turn that pressure into something meaningful. Um Celtic score, and and that's us. You, know, you go back to 2010, I think, before we've ever come back from behind to beat them. Um, and, and certainly not something that you would associate with this this particular uh, Rangers manager. So it's it, we were all a bit concerned if Carter Vickers does what he did at Ibrox, then the narrative's set in stone, you know, that we, we don't come back from that. Um, which would have been very disappointing just with the way that we played and set out right from the start and the first half was so enjoyable um, but, but given that, that that kind of narrative and especially given the 120 minutes that was even more draining actually on um, on Thursday night uh, to come back from that to find something, something out of nothing and it was um, it was a fantastic goal from a player that missed a barn door from three hmm. yards or whatever on, on, on the Thursday night. A superb finish, which just sparked us back into life and provided that energy uh, and resurgence and thought we were the better team again from, from that point on. So it was really only that, that kind of 20, 25 minute spell at the start of the second half. Um, and that that's the story. If, if Rangers nick something the first half, Adam, and we hold on and we win one nothing. Um, as, as, as happy as we would be um, I don't think we would have been as delighted as we were on Sunday night because we'd seen something a bit different from this manager, from this group uh, that I think you can probably hold on to more and, and when and if they're in tough spots again, they can dig into that again um, because they've, they've, they've come through that, I think it was a, a huge effort and a huge result be interesting to see the confidence that, that they take from it, it always amazes me when a team has went through the season that they went through last year, um, that confidence can be knocked. Um, but I think we've seen that quite a bit this season uh, and even in the, the two years previous as well. I, I just find it quite strange how a, a professional footballer can be so good at one point and then have these bouts of, of lack of confidence. And, and I guess someone like Borna Barisic is a, is a really good example of that. Um, it's interesting that we spoke this season and the general inference, I think, any shows that we've done has been, it's been a season of domestically anyway, death by by a thousand cuts. There hasn't really been <clears throat> any one big major thing other than maybe the Parkhead away game, but yeah. most of it has been um, very, very small margins. And again, you mentioned that Carter Vickers thing. Um, football has all these little margins yeah. within them. We can, we can point to two or three pretty crucial ones. If you look at Maybe Ross County away. Yeah. Um, a very, even even the Celtic game a couple of weeks ago, if we'd that dominance we had in the early yeah. stages, if we'd got another goal or we'd kept for a for a few minutes, who knows what can happen? It's these fine margins. We're we're not far away. I don't think um, in the league, despite that that six point gap, there's just maybe been that point, as you said, we haven't strapped ourselves in and got over the line um, on enough occasions in in this season. And that's maybe symptomatic of Hamden as well, other than the Hearts semi-final win. Um, there hasn't been a game at Hamden where we've 
went out and dominated. There hasn't been a game at Hamden where we went out and, and got the victory that we needed to get us to the next level. So that's maybe the kind of benchmark there, if you like, that Van Bronckhorst has managed to do that and the players have managed to do that in this game. Um, and at the very least, it sets a bit of a marker for, for next season. Yeah, possibly. I mean, you maybe, in terms of performance, could point to the, the, the 2019 League Cup yes. final. Um, but we didn't come away with the we didn't come away with the win. We were we were put in a position, and we, for whatever reason, never never uh, responded in the way we responded on on Sunday. We we're unable to do that. Uh, and you're right about these margins, um, but the, the the best in sport will tell you that they all find themselves in tough spots. It's the ability to dig deep and keep cool, and I guess trust your 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 success in the past. Um, uh, speak to those doubts in the head and, and find something deeper, which we've not really done at stages this season. Um, but we did on Sunday. And that, as I said, that's the kind of thing that, that players in the future when they're in tight spots can can remember. So, you know, we've done this before. Uh, I thought it was, and at Hamden as well, with this dreadful record of, of, of late. Um, you know, all these things could play in players' minds that this is just what happens here to us. And it was tired, and wasn't it, on Thursday? And we've got to go again um, in, in this European thing. So uh, easy again, just to just to let that narrative take shape and 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 you know repeat itself. But uh, as I said, it could be a huge day. It's something we we could talk about in in, in years to come has been a um, a bit of a um, a bit of a milestone. And even off the pitch uh, as well. Um, I know we kind of take it for granted sometimes, but. I, I felt very, very nervous <clears throat> on Saturday just because um, you kind of want to get something from the season and you want to put that marker down. I think most people would say the league is, is going to be very difficult as we'll, we'll come on to, but I don't normally get that nervous that early, if you like. Maybe it's, it's normally more of a, a morning thing, but for me, it kind of took on a bit of significance. I wanted the team to get um, this under their belts. Obviously, you want to go through as well, but I think that kind of transmitted from um, the fans. Other than two or three minutes after after Celtic scored uh, and there was a visible angst maybe. Um, everybody just kind of got, got over it and got back on, got singing. The atmosphere was absolutely incredible. Probably the best I can remember at Hamden, certainly without us actually winning, winning a, a trophy uh, on the back of it. I thought the fans did us proud throughout the, the whole game and undeniably must have given the players a huge shot in the arm at a time when they would have been very, very tired. No, I'd agree with that. Um, look, Hamden's, Hamden's tough to find any atmosphere. Uh, we, yep. we know that. It's not particularly been well uh, well redesigned. Uh, but uh, I, I would agree that the last two games have been two of your all-time best kind of Rangers fan experiences, possibly, just in terms yep. of, of, of those intangibles, in terms of the noise and, and, and I hate to use all togetherness, but that, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, which has not always been the case uh, of this season. Um, so, I, so I know exactly what you mean. Um, it was just uh, uh, that Thursday was so big. If, we, if we'd lost on Thursday, we'd, that, that doesn't happen on Sunday. No. Um, but the excitement of being the European semi-final and doing it in the manner in which we did. And that whole run, we will maybe touch on this again on this show, I don't know, Adam, but... Um, People compare it with with 08, which is understandable. We didn't play this way in 2007, 2008. Um, we have, at times, um, leathered the opposition that we've faced in the, this this kind of knockout run. Um, it's been very exciting. Um, high octane, uh, so um, all-encompassing at times. And I really felt like that. Um, and I think that just rolls on and it just rolls on and, and you're right, there's a sucker punch and you, you, fans tend to take that that a wee bit of time to get going. Um, but but once the team kind of sparked us back into life, which I think they did with that goal, then it was just it was just non-stop. And again, the team in sync with the fans. That's the thing. That That's what makes an atmosphere, I think, yeah. is when, it's when the, the, the thousands of strangers are, are, are kind of unified by these 11 strangers um, to us, um, and you're you're all just you're all just in the kind of one uh, the one wave um, of optimism, um, and for most of Sunday and certainly 
pretty much most of Thursday. Uh, that's that's what it felt like, and, and hopefully we've got a few more of those. Definitely, and it was obviously worth remembering. It was sucker punches in both games that we've mm-hmm. had to we've had to come back from as well, which I think gives it gives it an extra significance. So absolutely, it was a fantastic week. Um, we have looking ahead. Then we've got Motherwell at Fur Park tomorrow. For those of you who have been living off grid, uh, that has been moved from from Sunday to Saturday. So that is twelve o'clock tomorrow. We're both going. Um, and then we've got Leipzig away next Thursday, which we're also both going to. Um, there are some injury concerns, Martin. I'm sure you'll be stunned to hear um, for tomorrow with the manager saying in his press conference that Aaron Ramsey and Kamara Roof will be out of the next two, three games, possibly, he said, mm. um, but should be fine for um, the Ibrox leg. I think if we're being harsh, Martin, history tells us it seems unlikely that both of them will make that Ibrox leg even, even now, but regardless, it's not ideal, but at the same time, it's not really surprising either, is it? We, we, we know the deal with these two players. We can argue they shouldn't have been signed. We should have signed players maybe of lesser quality that were more durable. Um, these guys are moments players they have come up uh, in the moments over the last couple of weeks that is the deal uh, I get some people don't like that they would prefer those more durable players that are maybe less likely to give you those moments it is where we are just now hopefully in the summer we can rectify this and get players that we can trust fitness wise going forward but regardless these two are a big a big miss I think for the next three um, it's always a big, uh, big disappointment when you when your moments players and they are moments players because they're capable of, of vision that, that no other Rangers player has and execution. Um, but yeah, uh, not the most reliable of of, of two. I, mean, I think when when we saw Aaron Ramsey go off at Hamden, clutching the back of his leg, strip over his head, um, we assumed that that's him. Yep. So I guess, um, with the glass half full side, this is a bit of good news today that he's he's, he's potentially back in the, the the picture at all this season, and you, you don't know how many more moments we will require from him, and it might just be a couple, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's good news. Roof, who knows how and, and when that was sustained, he did look leggy at the, the, the back end of that. Um, potentially, um, or possibly he was he was left on the park a wee bit too long on Sunday. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I don't think he was keen to come off. What does it change for the next three? Let, let, I mean, let's presume, let's be very optimistic because I would I would be cynical like you and, and the, the thought of the two of them lining up at Ibrox against Leipzig is is, is maybe uh, a wee bit um, optimistic, but let's 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 indulge that optimism. I wait Parkhead, wait wait for Park, and, and await Leipzig. Now with Roof anyway, I think what was so impressive on Thursday, especially, which hasn't really been the case of late since Morelos dropped out, was our ability in big games to get players close to Roof make him live, bring him into a game because when you do, he can make a difference and I thought he was superb on, on, on Thursday against Braga um, and at times on, on Sunday. Are we going to play that way in Germany? Wouldn't have thought so. No. Wouldn't have thought he would have started actually, if available. Good no. to bring on for sure but I, I think uh, you'll be better placed to to, to tell me Um but we need to be in this when we leave Germany. And I don't think it's going to be a case of flooding the, the Leipzig box um, anyway. Um, I think you're going to see a couple of runners and and, and us just having out balls and, and, and being able to, to escape that way now and again um, because we're, we're just going to have to hang in. So I'm not sure that's the biggest loss. I'm not sure the way we play at Parkhead, although how material that'll be who knows so I, I'm I'm not overly concerned about the three games running up it's whether you can trust those three games to be the only one because if we if we're in a similar situation to Braga we're one nil down against Leipzig or or you know we have to go for it uh then you know there's no no prizes for being scared in a, a, a European semi-final second leg you have to go for it and that that does mean bringing Roof into the game and, and providing the support and being brave. Uh, 
and that's where he would be a huge loss if he, if he wasn't fit for that Ibrox game. So the, the media say maybe not so much, but but certainly Ibrox. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I don't think he might have played, all been well, he might have played on Saturday, Roof. Um possibly, possibly not, given the amount of minutes in his in his legs. He is he isn't one thing I think is really valuable about him is he doesn't take much time to get up to speed. He'll come in and, and he'll do something. Match fitness doesn't really seem to be much of an issue out with <clears throat> actually having a base level. Um Le- Leipzig away, no, I think you're right. I think to be honest now, I think we'd see Sakala up top mm-hmm. and maybe Aribo Arfield and Kent behind yeah. something like that containment but with a bit of pace on yeah, on the break um, and to be honest I think we would we're getting away ahead I guess but we would treat Celtic in, in the same way uh, I think uh, certainly with the way that they try to come out um, I think we would want to press high absolutely but we wouldn't necessarily look to play Roof in that game I think if we didn't have to I get we played them on, on Sunday but one off semi-final game I think yeah. is, is maybe slightly slightly different so I, I, I can agree with you if you're looking at it half fully maybe we wouldn't have played those two Ramsey I think probably yeah. uh, the away game maybe in Leipzig would be unlikely but I think he would have, he would certainly have played the others so maybe not a huge loss um, it's not great not to have him um, and, and having to just have Sakala there I think is, is a bit of a a bit of an issue but um, it, it's not a huge deal. And we have seen this management team, Martin, we have seen them pull something out of the bag. Um, away in Braga wasn't a great performance at all, but it was Kent, Sakala and Arfield up yeah, top. Yeah. Um, it may be that we do something like that uh, in those games and we'll see how it goes. What about tomorrow though? I'm keen um, to, to chat about that. There is a bit of chat, understandably, about it being effectively a, a dead rubber. Um, well, it may be true to, to some extent. <clears throat> we have seen at this ground, in fact, that things can change very, very mm. quickly in the past. Thursday is undoubtedly the bigger game. It's the biggest game in a vast number of years. Um, with those injuries, etc., how, how do we handle the squad? We've seen some shouts of uh, play the B-team players, do this, do that. Um, I don't agree with that personally. I think we need to have the, the core of the players that have played so far. Okay, we have injuries, so we're naturally going to expect guys like maybe Sakala or, or Wright to be more in contention for a for a start than, than they would have been. But where do you lie on this? Is it resting again ahead of, of Thursday or do we go out here and, and try and um, claw back? Well, don't you can cry about fixture timing and, and whatever and then play a B team? when you yeah. get what you want. Uh, so I don't think that's there's going to be any wholesale stuff there. Sakala will play because he has to, and secondly, because it's Motherwell. And he always scores against Motherwell. Uh, wouldn't be averse to, to seeing Kent take a, a, a wee rest. I think he's, he's, he could probably be, be do with one and, and, and see Sakala on the left, but he... he is more comfortable. Um, Scott Wright seems to be in, in, in favour, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him um, feature as well. Who knows? With respect to the dead rubber thing, I, we're not there quite yet. Um, I think this is the last weekend, really. I think if Celtic win in, in Dingwall, then yeah. Uh, I think you, you are playing bounce games in the league for the rest of the season. But if they don't, you're you're bringing that into to four or or maybe three points with a game to play. Um. Then if you if you were watching on from any other, if you're watching this on on unravel in uh, in another league, Adam, you you wouldn't be you wouldn't be finishing it. Um. So still be the outsider, and still you know we would certainly wouldn't be favourites for the title. But I think I think this is this is. This is the last chance for that, and it, it, as faint as it is, it's it's still, you know, it's still there. If if they they wobble, and you know they've got to respond to to to, to last weekend, they look shattered for a team that's been playing one game a week for you know however long. They I thought they looked pretty exhausted. They looked like a team who thought they'd won the league at Ibrox. Um. And it's it's tough just to pick up your levels again. Um, you know, a lot of their players who have who have really come to the fore, 
had already played seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they have to go to the wire, if they, they have to be asked continual questions over the next two league games, which is really all it is, um, I think it's easier said than done just to, to all right, shit, right, we need, we need to kind of pick this up. Because I, I did find that interesting last week. Now, I'm sorry to go over the, the, the semi-final again, but the Celtic game plan did make a bit of sense. Rangers are going to be tired. Um, keep it tight for, for an hour. Try and get a goal, and then they'll be they'll be punched out. Um, but but given the way that you know Celtic played at, at, at Ibrox and certainly at Parkhead, and the, the way they've, they've styled themselves anyway, um, it was interesting that they didn't seek to, to try and punch us out early and really finish it. Um, and they were they were content just to, to to see out that bit of time. So I don't know what's left in that tank either. Uh, so I certainly wouldn't be treating Mother was a as a warm up, as a friendly, as a, a a dead rubber, not yet. Um, I think we need to ask that that penultimate question, maybe, and Celtic can answer that and pretty much finish it on the Sunday. That's up to them. But if they don't, then it, it kind of is back on, and then then the pressure really is on again. Um, so so no, I I I don't see tomorrow as as a complete waste of time. I guess that's <clears throat> that's the other in, intrigue here, isn't it? That we've we've had that that move forward mm-hmm. uh, a day to assist us, but what that does then it doesn't necessarily change a huge amount because I think our game would be fi- would have been finished on the Sunday before it, right immediately yeah. <clears throat> Celtic had kicked off, but it just has that that day of what if we overnight um, think that it, Rangers are three points behind, hopefully, um, and like you said, I, I have I've never seen that before. I, I was amazed. In the February game, um, to be honest, just how far off they fell after half time, and we spoke on here about again in a, in a game where we got, in the first half we got absolutely blitzed. We're still four minutes away from it being a very fine margin at half time, um, and then they came out and you maybe think in your negative moments, yeah, they're just toying with Rangers and they're just sitting back because the game's done, and that might have been true, but evidence is starting to stack up that. And it's not going to go away, given what you've said. It's we're at the end of the season. It's been a hard season, or season and a half for for some of their players. They just look puffed out all the time. I think their yeah. fitness levels are just horrendous. I don't understand. It, it, it's not it's not Liverpool early Klopp or Dortmund early Klopp that they're doing. It's nowhere near that level of high energy or or high yeah. press. I, I I don't understand it. That's a conditioning thing for me. Fair enough, they've managed it and they've they've had enough to blow teams away and absolutely, given their form over the last six months or so, they've done very, very well. But I'm just amazed at how quickly they fall off. And I think the semi, you're right, they've not had the capacity to go and, and do that. They've only had Maida, who who um, is very, very quick and presses very, very intelligently, but isn't a very good footballer. Um, so that that's their challenge. There, it just seems it seems strange, and I think the old firm game at, at Ibrox as well. Again, they got themselves in front and they sat and they contained, which is quite a strange thing for them to do. But that's those last three games. At moments, they've decided to sit back and contain, um, and it's worked in two of them, but hasn't hasn't didn't work in in the semi final. So the confidence level, I think, there will be knocked. I think you could see that in their players. You could see that in the manager after the game. Um, the players have was it had to come out. Even you come out, Adam, and, and and talk publicly about being tired. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Like that's very, very strange. Okay, it's been done. I don't know what the paper was. You know what it's like when it, it's an, an yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sportiva, whatever that, whatever country that's from, and it's been said somewhere that you wouldn't necessarily think it would get back for for some reason in in this age. But yeah, to come out and say I'm I'm feeling very tired, and I think some of the other players are the same. Doesn't really bode well. Um, it's these fine margins again. It's just a shame that we are six. Six behind, and it's even the draw. I mean, the draw felt like a disaster for uh, Ibrox, but even getting that draw and pulling it back to um, to that margin might have had us a wee bit more um, incentive wise. But it's going to be interesting to see. I think um, I am looking forward to the game tomorrow, uh, and I think we just have to do our job right, and we just have to get the three points and see what happens. We have seen things come back from from this point before, um, but I agree. If I'm watching. Premier League and it gets down to five points it gets down to six points with, between Liverpool and Man City you're not thinking especially with another game to come you're not thinking that it is completely out of the water I think it's just up here 
and the suffocating nature of things and the fact that nine times out of ten both do win their games maybe mm. just has it has a wee bit of a wee bit of a factor in it and momentum and the, the story of the season and uh and all of that it's perfectly understandable perfectly understandable for rangers fans to be downbeat and again you're talking about outside outside chances and i'm not saying we're going to we're going to win the league you'll never believe us um and all that i'm just saying it's, it's not quite at, at, at dead rubber stages dingwall has been the source of great drama in this season um and <laughs> They've still got to go and do it, is, is all I would say. So while that's still the case, um, we, we need to be, we still need to show a lot of focus there. And I think we will, and I, I think we'll be all right tomorrow. Yeah, I hope so, I hope so. In terms of the game for, for tomorrow, um, my view on the resting of players is is no, I think we play as close to first, first strength as, as we have, and the reasons for that are, as we've just mentioned, but also, and this is something we've spoken about before, Martin, these players thrive on this two games a week schedule I think the ones that we've got um, we've already had nearly a week's break um, there is an argument I guess maybe Martin Ryan Jack Leon Balligan the, the guys that maybe need their fitness specifically managed yeah, possibly yeah. sitting out maybe even Lundstrom and Bassey if I'm, if I'm being harsh just because of the exertions of of the games and because we'll need both of them definitely for the next four at least I could maybe see see that I know you yourself will probably be raging about Lundstrom missing uh, any kind of minutes but um, I could just see things like that happening but I think it'll be a bit of an evolution rather than a, a revolution for sure uh, Jack I can see uh, because yeah we, 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 we have to be very careful how we, we manage specific players, I'm not sure Lundstrom and Bassi can make that, that bracket at all but yeah they're clearly very important, Lundstrom is incredibly important um, to, to everything we do, especially away from home um, over the next wee while. So, uh, but he'll be, he'll be desperate to play. Um, you've got a Davis option there, of course. Um, he, he looked he looked good after five, ten minutes when he, he, he came on, on on Sunday. Um, so, th- there are options there. Um, but I, I, there is a general feel that this team... This, this team are bad with breaks. It's why uh, winter breaks is not something we should ever entertain <laughs> ever again because uh, we don't seem to get going again after them. But um, uh, And also the, the, the talk of rest means that fatigue gets in the head and uh, and all these things. So it's, it's, it's a tough managerial task, you know, uh, to, to to just oversee a big run in on, on what, three fronts. I know we can push the Scottish Cup now to the to the very end because that's that's taken care of, um, uh, but but yeah the the, the lineup will be very interesting tomorrow. <clears throat> I just I want to get your take on Lundstrom. I know we we've spoken about him a lot. I know you watched him a fair bit at Sheffield United, and you've got some friends down there as well. I think we had some concerns that it was maybe a, a genie in a bottle season the the year before, and he was maybe coming up here, um, maybe not in his his best mm. form. It's been very topsy turvy. He started poorly, then he, he had a he had a run, um, maybe September time, where he mm-hmm. was he was very very good, and he dipped again. Um, I don't know who what show it was on, but someone had said up until the Celtic game, I think he hadn't even played ninety minutes in total mm-hmm. under um, under Gio. Ever since then, I think him more more so him, but certainly the Lundstrom and Jack combination has has really seen us through. He is that type of player that we've probably needed in the middle there, not talking just about, I think it was Andy that maybe said it, not talking most about just physicality, but that is absolutely something that we have been missing and we've seen him use it to, to good effect at the weekend. But it's his ability on the ball as well, the swinging, swinging those passes, um, long-range passes with both feet, shooting, he's scored against Hearts with his right foot, he should have scored on Sunday with his, with his left foot. He's just quite all action. You wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think of him as a, a kind of complete midfielder in, in the kind of creative sense, but... Other than that, he's got he's got everything really that we need, and he's been absolutely outstanding for the last six weeks or so. No, he has. He didn't arrive in form. That that was that was the big problem. If he had, if Rangers had had, had nabbed him in the summer of twenty twenty, yeah, then you'd be doing cartwheels because he had he had been outstanding for Sheffield United in that that first season in the Premier League. Uh, but like many players in the last season, of their contract. Wasn't last season. He, he didn't have a good season at all, and 
you're still taking that player. You're taking the player at the end of that season, not in good nick, not in good form. Uh, and you know, we 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 saw bits and pieces, some of the 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 some good stuff early on, but some very very bad. And you know what this club's like. You know what this support's like um, at, at taking to new players who don't hit the ground sprinting. Uh, but I think in January would would any of them been that shocked if we would try to get rid of Lundstrom and kind of cut our losses? Um, and I think it was the the game after Parkhead it was at the Hearts game at Ibrox yes. Adam, on the Sunday, and he, he was brought in out of nowhere, and he was absolutely superb. But it was it was in Germany, it was in Dortmund that him and Jack um, looked like a revelation. As a as as someone who was controlling the midfield, controlling the game, um, and yes, was prepared to travel with the ball, popping up here with with a few goals, um, but but more just a presence on the ball, off the ball, um, that, that he kind of carved out that 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 role for himself. I guess Davis did to an extent in a different way, but he, that that was the kind of midfield presence that we had last season. Very different type of personality um, but the, the the night in Dortmund was well I think one of the best Rangers performances I've seen individually uh, and he's he's done similar since then I thought he, he absolutely ran the game in, um, against Bragg at home um, man the match again on, on Sunday and just given that bit of fear factor around the Rangers team that we've we've not had for an awful long time and a, a welcome, a welcome return to form, uh, settling in, and and ultimately, Adam, when everything, all things being equal, and everything settles down, there's a Premier League midfielder. Yep. Right. So when he is good on the ball, and he is um, competent and composed, and, and and kind of dominant at times, it really shouldn't be that much of a surprise. It's, it's just taken a while to to rediscover that 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 John Lindstrom of before and find his role in this team, which has so much to do with combinations. Because it's not a, an individual sport; it's a team sport. Um, and the manager found his um, found his partnership there, really. And he's been loath to to deviate from that in in, in big games. So, um, yeah, more of that. I think that double pivot <clears throat> with Jack and Lundstrom is is key, especially now that he's he's Gio's he moved the fullbacks forward again. It, it could have been yeah. a little bit little bit static when you've got that two there and we've seen that in a few games it's maybe got a little bit it's almost like he went too far the other way if you, yeah. it's actually crazy to think that he went to away to Parkhead and played Kamara as a six with Aribo yeah. Arfield as the oh as the two eights now looking back um, I think he did the same against Malmo Ibrox possibly if yeah. memory serves me correctly yeah. um, he now he flipped it around and, and went Jack and Lundstrom but then he still kept the full backs back but he's now tweaked it again to get them forward so we're now seeing those combinations and angles and things that that are very, very useful. Um, I still think we need Stephen Davis in there for, for Thursday night. I thought in the early stages at, at Hamden, we we didn't struggle, um, but the, the balls that McLaughlin was was playing out to Bassey and Goldson and, and through to Barisic, if we had Davis in between, if you like, able to pick that, pick that ball up and swivel and play, I thought that would have given us a an additional dimension. That's maybe not a strength of of Jack and Lundstrom in, in that sense. That's the only thing I think we were missing, but I, I don't fancy being the person that tells either of them that they can't play. So, But that, um, this is what I mean. That, that I, I agree, right? Um, that that swivel that you're talking about, that that picking the ball up, do we have anyone as good as that at the club than Davis? Probably not. No. But it goes back to what I said. You're seeing the best of Lundstrom now because he's, he's the boss of that midfield and that's where he's going to inhabit. That space is where he's going to inhabit, and I. The 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 overlapped for a bit on Sunday. Um. And then obviously Lundstrom kind of run his race, and that's when Davis then I thought looked far more involved and and far more like Stephen Davis of old. Um. And I just <laughs> putting names on a sheet's easy getting. The right blend and, and and allowing people to express themselves because you can you can't have too many bosses in there and you can't have too many people try to lead and and, and dictate tempo which is really what you're looking for that 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 area of the, the field um there can only be one conductor um so that's why I think the two of them of of our managers and it's not just Van Bronckhorst with the two of them have been a, a bit reluctant to to use both 
Um, all the results have not been great. I'm talking about just that individual um, chemistry rather than the, the, the team results because that's obviously based on nine other players as well. Uh, I, I just um, I just wonder if that's that's a kind of reticence. As much as we, we love all these these midfield players, um, it's, it's probably Jack that keeps keeps him out of the team rather than, than Lundstrom. Yeah, I think we're now probably at the stage where experimentation certainly is is out the window, especially when you think of the injuries um, that we've got I think over the last six weeks off the top of my head. It's only, this is always the case, but Tavernier, Goldson and Kent are, are probably the only three Warriors going to the well every every single game. I think everyone else has probably had a had a spell out of the team for for whatever reason. We we never really know game to game who the left centre back will be. We've now got Barisic back in the back in the frame for for left back. Ramsey, Kamara, um, Jack are all, all kind of rotating. Wrights came in, which we probably didn't didn't expect. Mm. Sakala um, chopping in and out as well. So I think if we have that solid base there, especially with the attack. And left side of the defence anyway being so fluid just now, having that solid base in front is probably going to do us more um, benefit than not. And really, you could argue maybe tomorrow, Jack and Lundstrom, we maybe don't need that against Motherwell, but look at all the other games. We've got three, hopefully three massive European games. Yeah. Celtic away, Hearts away, Hearts of Hamden. Absolute shoe-ins that we need that that there. So, um, yeah, we'll see how things go. I don't expect to see Jack tomorrow. No, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. But it'll be interesting to see what he does. Maybe it will be a a Davis sitting in two runners type type game. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But we will see um, in less than less than twenty four hours time. So huge weekend for for Rangers. Huge week coming up, as we said. But it's also a, a big week for some of the other teams. We've got the women's team playing at Ibrox on Sunday for one of the first times. I don't think it's the first time as per as per the update the other day. It's one of the first times uh, playing against Aberdeen on Sunday. Tickets for that are just one pound for season ticket holders and concessions. Three pounds for my Jazz members. Five pounds for non season ticket holders. And if you are a my Jazz member, you get a point for attending uh, that match is 10 past four on sunday and the b team are now playing at the same time i think it is as as the the men's team unfortunately with the with the fixture change they are on at well not on the same time sorry but they're on the same day three o'clock on on saturday i think ross and possibly james are going along to that rangers b against They'll beat a star. They had a big win uh, in the cup. They've beaten the Celtic twice in in two weeks, so they will be on um, on a high as well going into that game. So if you are uh, about and you're not going to to Motherwell, make sure you get along to that game. And there's a game on Sunday as well if that takes your fancy. I think that will do us for tonight, Martin. I am hoping not to be back next week. I'm hoping to be very hungover, and Cami will be stepping into the to the extra chair. Um, but thank you for joining me for this one. Pleasure, mate. See you soon. And thank you all for listening. Uh, as usual, um, if you haven't yet subscribed on Patreon, please do. It's patreon.com forward slash heart and hand up to four shows a day for as little as £1.50 a week. Um, if you haven't subscribed, as I said, please go and do so if you would like to hear more from us. Again, just have a great weekend, everyone, and we will be back next week. Thank you.